Do you feel like you're wasting time trying to figure out what to study rather than actually studying? Well, I help aspiring professional engineers like you to become sure that you'll pass the PE exam on the first try. And this is the series where every day I give you one insight, one rule of thumb, one key distinction, or one fundamental idea so that little by little you can get clear on what matters and how to focus your valuable time and energy. In today's daily insight, we're going to talk about pressure being given as the height of a water column. So what do we mean by that? Well, imagine you have a situation where you're trying to pump water up a building and there's a certain amount of water pressure required on the top floor. Let's say you need a minimum of 10 PSI to be present right here on the top floor. And then the building is like 100 feet high and this is going all the way out to the street to some water main in the street. It may not be easy to think about this problem in terms of PSI, right? It's like, well, there's some water pressure in the street, some amount of PSI, how much is required to get that all the way up. But it's very easy to think about the height of the building. We already know the building's 100 feet high. And this thing is a column of water because we're pumping water to the top. And even if it wasn't a column of water, if it was some other fluid, we could just use specific gravity and convert it. So if we can think about feet as a unit of pressure, even though it's not, it's a unit of length, then that's a quick way to estimate how much pressure is needed. Now, of course, we need a way to convert back to PSI, and we could do that using this formula, pressure equals rho GH. And when you really get into things, we'll want to unpack this formula and understand it fully. But the short version, without doing any serious derivations here, is that the density is constant and the acceleration due to gravity is constant, or in US units, it cancels out with GC in the denominator and pressure becomes a function of height, which makes perfect sense. A bigger column, more pressure. And for liquid water, the conversion factor, the rule of thumb that we always come back to is 2.31 feet of water per PSI. And that is a rule of thumb that I suggest you memorize. So for this building, we got 100 feet, we could divide 100 feet by 2.31, and that'll tell us how many PSI are required to get to the top floor. And then we just have to add the outlet pressure, which is required 10 PSI, and that's what we need to have in the street at a minimum. We could have more than that, and then we'll have more at the outlet. And if that's excessive, then we can have some pressure reduction along the way. And one other way to think about this that I find useful is we know that atmospheric pressure is 14.7 PSI. That's something that most people memorize early in the process. And you can imagine having a very tall column of water, which is being exposed to atmospheric pressure at the bottom, right? The atmosphere is pushing down everywhere. And if it's open at the bottom, or maybe we can draw it like this and say, it's like a manometer. This is an open tube with the atmosphere pushing down here. Now, if this was open at the top and the atmosphere were pushing down on both sides, then the water level would just equal out right and left. But if we were to vacuum out, if we were to evacuate by running a vacuum pump and pulling all the air out of this space such that the absolute pressure was zero, then theoretically that 14 PSI of atmospheric pressure that's pushing down over here is pushing up on the column of water. Now imagine we made this column this uh, very high. Would it go up infinitely high? No, because the atmosphere doesn't have an infinite amount of pressure. It would only go up so high. And we can calculate how high by multiplying the atmospheric pressure by 2.31. And if you do that, 2.31 feet per PSI times 14.7 PSI, that equals approximately 34 feet. And I think that's handy to know. That atmospheric pressure is about equal to 34 feet of water. Those are roughly equivalent amounts of pressure. And it's not that that number is particularly important, it's that I want you to start to develop some intuition, right? Maybe you have a building with floors that are 17 feet. If you have a column of water that's two stories high, that's about the same amount of pressure at the bottom of that column as the atmosphere exerts at sea level on the Earth. And that's today's daily insight on pressure as the height of a water column. All right, guys, I hope this video was useful. 
When you're ready to start putting these ideas into practice, head over to mechanicalpeexamprep.com. There are tons of original practice problems with detailed video solutions that are easy to watch. And the course previews are free, so go check it out. And until next time, happy studying.